There we go. Uh, Mr. Uh, Matsuoka from Osaka University will talk to us on immersion cooling. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. My name is Morito Matsuoka from Osaka University. It's OK. Can you hear me? OK, thank you very much. So uh, actually, this project is supported by uh, uh, no, related a joint project with uh, the Fujitsu Corporation and supported by the Ministry of Environment of Japan, MOE. So today, so, okay. So <clears throat> first, um, before discussing the result of today's main topic, I'd like to uh, summarize uh, the various immersion method uh, that was, has been reported so far. I don't know if you are familiar with that or not. <clears throat> this table summarizes the characteristics of various immersion techniques. The arranging from the viewpoint of diffusion phase, uh, it can be uh, broadly classified into two groups. The one is the single phase method, and the other is the two phase method with vaporization. So in, in the single phase method, the low vapor pressure uh, diffusion, such as the 3M's, Freunet, FC43, or FT38, uh, something, so, sorry, something. So one of the fluorocarbon series are generally used. And for the two-phase method, highly vapor pressure refrigerant such as uh, Nobec are uh, usually uh, used for fluorocarbon that they also manufactured by Australian Corporation. So there are three typic, uh, typical single-phase method. From the left, <coughs> you can see <coughs> the, <coughs> the first one is the force convection. The, this method is the most standard and stable immersion cooling method. It's uh, characterized by a high input power input limit. The, however, the power of the pump causes the PUE to deteriorate. The second one is the natural convection method. It doesn't use a pump or fan for diffusion convection, and uh, they call the excellent PUE values, actually. So in, in our experiment, we achieved 1.02. However, the, since the convection of the diffusion uh, depend only on the upward flow caused by the heat generation of the CPU. The, the, the upper limit of the power input to the CPU is not so high, very low. The last one is the droplet method. The, uh, we actually, we introduced uh, this technique at the last OCP Global Summit in San Jose. So it's a technique that the uh, refrigerant is dropped locally on the hot spot. And since this method allows the liquid to, the, uh, to flow freely from the top to the bottom, and the pump power is required to lift the, the liquid to the upper tank. But even so, the 1.02 PUE was uh, still demonstrated. The two-phase method shown on the right-hand side is a highly efficient cooling technology as you know probably, that, that uh, uses the evaporation phenomena on the CPU surface to promote the convection and to locally de deprive the heat of vaporization. The, certainly, it has uh, excellent cooling characteristics, but because of the evaporation phenomena, uh, a sealed container is uh, required, mandatory. So, and also, all system must be uh, shut down during uh, so server insertion, removal, and maintenance. So in short, every method has its a good point and bad point. Uh, therefore, <coughs> we pro uh, propose a bubble-assisted natural conviction method at the Russell CP Global Conference. So this table shows the comparison of the cooling characteristics of the typical immersion method. Force convection method, natural convection method, and uh, bubble assisted natural convection method. The force convection method has a high cooling characteristics, but the, the PUE is uh, not sufficiently low, while the natural convection method is uh, characterized by the low PUE, but a low upper power input limit. On the other hand, the bubble assisted natural convection system realizes the excellent characteristics of both methods. In other words, you can expect to increase the upper limit of power input to the CPU uh, while keeping the PUE low enough. So in addition, as I will mention in detail later, 
So uh, with uh, this bubble support, it's uh, possible to achieve the sufficient, sufficient cooling characteristics even when using high, highly viscous uh, refrigerant that they usually con uh, considered uh, un unsuitable for uh, cooling. This means that the dynamic range uh, for the physical properties of the refrigerant is uh, uh, widened, actually. Yes. <coughs> In this presentation, uh, I will uh, in introduce experimentally obtained cooling characteristics in, in uh, the commercial system fabricated by Fujitsu Corporation, actually. So this is an image of the configuration of the bubble-assisted natural convection system we used. So the bus tubs shown on the left consist of 24 commercially uh, available HPCI board. The board uh, in the center is inserted into the bus tub. The, the CPU is a Xeon processor and up to 145 watt power can be applied. And each board has two CPUs. And in the bus tub, uh, the three water cooled plate are arranged uh, vertically and uh, the one water cooled plate is placed at the bottom. And the water flowing in the water cooled plate is cooled by an external free cooling system. So in, in addition, the chillers are used as auxiliary cooling for use only in mid-summer, mid, uh, August, only on August. So average value of the system operating in, uh, uh, sorry, in, <coughs> in summer, so the PUE, sorry, the PUE value uh, used here is not the uh, instantaneous value, but uh, uh, the annual average value of the system operating in Tokyo. So probably similar cooling performance can be demonstrated in EU and also in North America, which uh, have a similar climate. So the, the bubble generation nozzle is placed directly under the CP board, and air is sent using the micro DC motor. Actually, we tried various nozzle, uh, but uh, there's no uh, difference in the cooling performance. And the performance depends mainly on the flow rate of the bubble. Oh my gosh, it doesn't work, sorry. <laughs> Freeze. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll try to figure out what's going on. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. So this is the top view uh, during bubble-assisted convection. The photo on the left represents the surface of the refrigerant when the bubble flow rate is one liter per minute. And the photo on the right is for five liter per minute. The, you, you can see uh, the, the bubbles rising in the red circle. In this system, the DC micropump for the bubble generation is installed in, in the bus tub especially near the top of the board, so the bubble gas uh, circulate only in the bus tub. Okay, sorry. I can skip this figure. Sorry. Okay. <coughs> well, so let me introduce the, the result of our latest experiment. So this graph shows how the CPU junction temperature varies with the bubble flow rate. The points show in the left side uh, correspond to the natural convection method without bubble support. The blue dot uh, for uh, silicon oil and the orange dot for uh, fluorinate FC3283 by uh, 3M Corporation. The here, 6CS is used as the, the model number of silicon oil. This CS is an acronym for the Senti Stokes and is a unit of a kinetic viscosity. So this viscosity, so it, this viscosity of silicon oil is higher than that of the fluorinate FC3283. So as shown in the, in the result, in the natural combustion method uh, without bubble support, uh, that cooling capacity is uh, determined, determined by the viscosity by the refrigerant uh, the smoother uh, uh, fluorinate has a higher cooling capacity, actually. 
the, this comparison agree well with the, the simulation result or we demonstrated. So on the other hand, with the bubble support, the cooling performance increases with the bubble flow rate regardless of the refrigerant. Here I have uh, to emphasize that uh, sufficient cooling performance can be achieved with bubble support even for a highly uh, viscous refrigerant, including silicon oil. So in fact, uh, some fluorinate-based uh, refrigerant, such as fluorinate, are known to have a very high global warming potential. So therefore, with the bubble support, a highly viscous refrigerant, including silicon oil, can be a great alternative as it's not only a low cost, low in cost, but also in the global warming potential. Yes, so let me explain more about the effect of bubble support. The here, the graph shown on the left show the change in the CPU junction temperature with respect to the CPU input power. And the graph on the right show the change in the overall applied power with respect to the CPU input power. A blue dots are for silicon oil and all ends up for FC 32 to HC. Here, the bubble flow rate was fixed at one liter per minute. Uh, since the upper limit of the junction temperature of the CPU used here is 93 degrees C, the upper limit of the CPU power input was estimated assuming that the CPU power can be applied unit uh, until the junction temperature reaches 93 degrees C. As shown in the result, with the bubble support, the cooling performance increases with the bubble flow rate in any refrigerant. In the case of silicon oil, the upper limit reaches 238 watt, and in the case of uh, fluorinate, uh, the upper limit reaches 257 watt. As a result, as shown on the right, it was found that over 16 kilowatt total system power can be cooled by any refrigerant. So this means that the sufficient cooling performance uh, can be uh, achieved with the bubble support, even with the highly viscous uh, refrigerant. Okay, so I'd like to show uh, another aspect of bubble support effect. So these graphs show the, how the CPU junction temperature varies with the temperature of the cold water flowing uh, through the cooling plate. The, the graph on the left is the fluorinate. The graph on the right is for silicon oil. Here, the bubble flow rate was also fixed at uh, one liter per minute. So as shown in the figure, the, the aid of bubbles of one liter per minute, uh, any diffusion has an effect of, of improving the cooling performance. In the case of fluorinate, uh, the effect will reaches around five degrees C, and in the case of silicon oil, the, the effect reaches around 15 degrees C. In other words, the, the bubble support has a bigger impact on the refrigerant which, with a high viscosity and a low cooling effect. I summarize that the heat resistance characteristics for bubble support system. Here, the, the detailed explanation is uh, omitted, I'm so sorry. So, but the, the bottom line is that the, the temperature gradient was uh, uh, 17 degrees C without bubble assist, but uh, it was reduced to nine degrees C by bubble support. So this means that the, the efficiency of the heat transportation from the CPU surface has improved dramatically due to the acceleration of the refrigerant convection with bubble support. As a result, uh, we can summarize that the bubble assisted, assisted cooling effect can be well explained in terms of heat resistance, as you, as you can see. So before uh, I get to a conclusion, I have to mention PUE. As for the bubble-assisted natural combustion type emerging technology, uh, the power generation part consists of three parts. Uh, the power of the server, power to produce the cold water and flow the water through the, the cooling plate, and the power of bubble generation. Of course, the part, of, uh, the, the part that produces cold water, which has chiller support only during midsummer, August, uh, throughout the year, basically uh, used free cooling, so its power contribution is very small. Uh, and the bubble generation part does not contribute much to PUE because 
uh, the power of the micro DC motor is uh, very small. So as a result, the contribution of the cooling water part is around 0.02 or more, and the contribution of the bubble support uh, part reaches 0.005 or more. Okay, so finally, I will give a summary of this presentation. First, uh, bubble-assisted natural convection enable both low PUE in simple natural convection and high cooling limit performance in forced convection. Second, uh, through the use of bubble-assisted natural convection, uh, higher viscosity refrigerant can also be sufficient replacement of floral carbon refrigerant fluorinate, uh, which lead to ensuring the cost advantage and more importantly, sustainability. Thank you very much. If you are interested then, uh, uh, please uh, visit my uh, poster this evening. Afternoon, sorry. Thank you.